Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your Sexy Ranch and co-host Calder Ness. This episode, we have special guest Aaron on talking about the Champion Clicks Open and of course, answering some listener questions and just having an all-around fun and rowdy time. This is episode 501. Howdy, howdy. Let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. I have the high ground. Oh yeah, you have the high ground. It's over, Simeon. Yeah! Instant deadpan. Oh, how how do you six people learn? think I am funny. I'm your Captain America! That was just you in a costume. You absolute fool. Simeon will be able to make that out. That's cool because it's expensive. I'm gonna make your clips like that forever. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dialage for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. And if you're buying straight from the source at shop.wizkids.com, you can use code DIALH10 for 10% off your order. Only works with select items, no iconics, no pre-orders, etc., etc. Check it out at shop.wizkids.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? It's the best. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I I was curious how long it would take <laughs> to get that into the show, and right away is beautiful. Yeah, Good. zero seconds is how yeah. long it took. <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first thought, yeah, that pizza Don't, uh, don't worry, listener, that'll be... Ready. A week from now, you'll understand that reference. Yeah, that um, yeah, that is correct. About roughly about a week from now, you'll understand that reference. Call, callbacks to five hundred. <laughs> callbacks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Aaron, what's going on, man? Not much, man. It's been a minute. Uh, I think the last time you and I saw each other was uh, both you guys was at Worlds, and then before that, we actually met at Champion Clicks last year. So it's come full That's circle. Right. So. That's right. I before we fully introduce Aaron, I just want to say. Aaron was one of the coolest people, and I'm not just saying this because he's here. I would tell this to a stranger on the street if they asked, but was one of the coolest people that Chance and I got to hang out with last year at the Champion Clicks Open. I was the lone Dial H man staying with the uh, the Rowdy Ranch Hand 2.0, Chance McCall at his ranch, and we drove to Champion Clicks every day, hanging out. You know, he was so worried, like, dude, we're registered for the team's event. We don't have a teammate. We don't have a teammate. And I'm like, don't worry, Chance. Life uh, finds a way. And it did. Uh, we met Aaron. We hung out with him. And not only did he offer to like, be on our team and hang out, and we chatted clicks and all this stuff, and it was a great time. But when we pulled like a garbage, terrible brick, my man was instantly like, get us a new one. Ro- roll it up. Ring it up. Let's go. Uh, got us a way better brick. Still didn't do amazing, but, you know, way more fun figures to play. So instantly shelled out for the team. Was a team player. Was kind of a Chad. What can we say, ladies and gentlemen? So... Good to have Aaron on the podcast. Aaron, you're kind of representing Dial. Uh, no, we're representing Dial H. You're representing Giant Reach in the Champion Clicks Open event here. Uh, just going to kind of talk about some of that. Before we get too crazy into our show, though, ladies and gents, let's start off with what made us happy. And Aaron, as the guest, you can go ahead and go first. Yeah, sure. Well, uh, as far as for Hero Clicks, I've been playing since Infinity Challenge. Uh, I've been playing since I was a kid with my brothers. There were three of us. When one of us was doing one thing, we all followed suit. So that kind of went hand in hand. But um, at least for Hero Clicks, I was playing pretty heavily right up until the Oreo dials were introduced. For Galactic Guardians, took a long break, intermittent coming back into the game, buying random packs. But um, I'd say about last year when uh, what Avengers Forever had just come out, I see it on the shelf and I buy some packs. I'm like, oh man, this is great. I was at my local comic book store and there was a hero click tournament on sat on that saturday came in i won three rounds i was like man i forgot how nice. awesome hero clicks and and he was like hey you should sign up for champion clicks i was like what the heck is that and uh he was like yeah today's actually the last day to sign up so you might as well sign up right right now i was like oh my god yeah i was like it's a big tournament for hero clicks in orlando super stoked about it so i signed up for the whole package that day and uh yeah when i went obviously we met Right away, you stuck out like a sore thumb with a cowboy hat. So I was like, oh, let me go say hi to this guy. He obviously is uh, seems friendly. So, And, uh, yeah, went into that. And with uh, Giant Reach, um, I kind of was introduced to them. Uh, guys out who started off in Avon Park, there's about four or five of them. They welcomed me and my brother into their group with open arms. And 
now we are official sponsors for Champion Clicks, and um, we're going to be there in full force. We're pretty heavily in the Central Florida area. We've got about 18 members. Um, and uh, yeah, at least for some of the founding members, I'm going to give some love and shout out to, to Gus, um, Cole, and Logan. All three of them are... They were the guys that really were super kind and also and showed me how killer hero clicks modern is actually played so it was a rude awakening at that point but yeah um been doing playing hero clicks consistently since champion clicks now um, i'm a judge at a store here in orlando um but i play at house rules gaming who's sponsoring the event and then the store that i play at as well but um yeah just want to give lots of love out to them and house rules and newmark for setting up the event because New Mark is my brother from another mother at this point. Oh, Very right romantic, on. romantical on a daily <laughs> basis. We meet up for hero clicks and card games probably like two, three times a week at this point. So, but yeah, oh, right, um, that's a ton of fun. Yeah, it's uh, it's been great, but it's a bit more about me. Um, very into hero clicks and the meta and pulp game. Um, but I do like the occasional fun teams as well. But yeah, I'm super excited for Champion Clicks coming in this week. Um, also, my brother, who makes a lot of the online 3D printing, uh, is going to be having a kiosk there that my lovely wife has volunteered to actually sell stuff for. So, wow. Got, yeah, wow. I I convinced her to actually come out and sell some of the stuff. So hopefully you guys come and buy some stuff from uh, Action Objects, my brother, who's one of the Giant Reach members, and buying some of his amazing 3D prints. He's the one that prints those uh, Aquaman tentacles, if you have seen them on oh, yeah. the web. Yeah, those are all John's. Uh, the Doc Ock tentacles as well, some awesome trays, some some tokens, and a variety of other things as well. So hopefully, you guys get to get there, buy some goodies, and have a good time at Champion Clicks. So he works off commission. So listener, if you go down, make sure you buy as much as possible. Make sure you know you pay full <laughs> price because otherwise, she's just sitting around for nothing. So got to make sure she doesn't feel too uh, <laughs> too obliged being there. No, I've got uh, I've got your brother's tokens. Small flex. Obviously, I won the Sioux Falls Champion Clicks trial. Beat out the U.S. National Champion Alex Mater. Flex, flex, flex. Get stunned on Alex. Um, and then uh, <laughs> I've got his cool barrier. I got his cool barrier markers. And I really like the ice barrier markers. Um, oh, yeah. Those are pretty fun. Those are pretty fun. I would love some. Uh, I'm sure you could do it in green. Because they're like kryptonite kind of to me. They look really cool. And then his. Uh, I like the wall, though. The wall is just so cool. Hand painted and all that stuff. It's like super neat. So. It makes good stuff. It does. I, I got to admit, like, normally, like, when I first heard of, like, 3D printing stuff, I was like, ah, oh, it never comes out great. But then I'm seeing the stuff. I'm like, God, like, can I get, like, three of these? You know, and people you are like, know, oh, where'd you get those? You know, that yeah. was that always my reaction up. to 3D printing, too, especially when I, like, first made something with it. I was like, this is such a pain in the butt to sand and do everything. And now it's just, like, way more refined. It's, like, way, way better. Come a long say, way. He, I think he's using a resin printer from what i've i've mm. seen his stuff on like maker's you know, market the and... way they feel that makes sense yeah he has he has three printers so uh, i think he's got a resin one the plastics one and then something else he yeah they, he does based on the print he's using a different printer so right on well aaron let's just you know we can just jump right into talking about the champion clicks open event here so we got a couple we're just gonna break it down day by day we're just gonna go through all the events we'll take turns kind of going into them here and asking some questions so you got yeah. the two-man teams event starting off Friday, January 26th, 2v2. It's going to be 400 points, modern age, apples and oranges event. Uh, do you know why they went 400 points? Were you part of this process? It's, it's not necessarily time? a modern age. Um, okay. But yeah, the 400, I mean, it kind of goes in theme with the what we did last year for... Um, I guess it was the, 400 points last year, wasn't it? Yeah. The, uh, uh, Prince, Prince and Popper. Popper. The yeah. Prince, of course, being Dial H's own event, Simeon's idea of making the Prince, and then you guys kind of changed, or Champion Clicks changed it a little bit. Um, and now it is apples and oranges. They didn't want to, they got tired of hearing from our law people, which is fine, because it's, it's theme. It's theme and pulp now, so it's technically not the Prince the Prince event. But yeah. two-man teams, each player is going to be representing either the apple or the orange. The A player is the apple, B player is the orange. When paired with an opponent's team, the A player plays the A player, B player plays B player. Uh, simple team events everybody knows it so oranges they're the pulp team that's gonna be 400 points it says modern you build a pulp team with all the normal hero clicks pulp rules and then the apples builds a little different so each figure gains a unique ring 400 points if the design intent is intended for a figure to be played in multiples then it will be an exception it does say this is at a judge's discretion so please ask ahead of time 
except for Coco. I assume this is yeah. like generics. <laughs> goons are probably fine. You know, Sentinels. I assume any basically anything that's like real name various, and then like I assume Loki's are fine. Doctor Fates, et cetera, et cetera. Things like just things of that nature. Um, but it's gonna be so it's gonna be a theme format, and Can't it's gotta be, be that, of though. course into the uh, theme team. So it's got to have a shared printed keyword. And it does say, this is kind of unique to this, all game elements are considered to be unique and sidelines are capped at one game element per 100 points of the build. So you get basically four things in your sideline. And it says modern elements only. So this isn't like classic theme where it's Silver Age. This is going to be like modern theme and then only four sideline elements, which is really interesting. Yeah, the the printed key... Uh keyword is probably the biggest part a lot of people were kind of like wait what WizKids official theme rules is it can only have printed keywords so right no keyword cheating obviously so, for so it to qualify as a theme you're of course you're playing in this you don't have to tell us <laughs> what you're playing or you don't have to tell the listener what you're playing anyways but are you excited to see like some 400 point teams like what do you think is going to come out of this um i'm excited to see because i feel as if a 400 theme kind of it strays away from the meta just enough to where people can actually get back to theme teams because theme teams without scots because let's be honest that's what theme teams are nowadays they're theme teams with scots shoehorned in so being able to see that on the on the board is going to be much more exciting with how some of the pieces were you know designed in the sets for some of the others so i think there's going to be some really exciting makeups for it um the only thing i'm dreading on saying which i think everybody else is along with that is that 48 ghost rider which is such a problem but yeah that's true just- yeah I, loves keeping his powers. I will also say I really like that you guys are doing modern theme instead of silver because that maybe was beneficial to you guys a really because there's good a huge change to silver just in this last week uh, with new erratas, new watch lists, new bands. So probably a good thing that you guys weren't doing theme like silver theme and you're doing modern theme instead. I think probably the best part about that might be just that um, – all the good celebrities are kind of gone. So you would always think, oh man, 400 point theme, probably just going to have a Scott Porter. Every theme is yeah. going to be a Scott Porter celebrity. You kind of look, look at celebrities and it's like, there's no Sakari and Iron Man. There's no Sakari Scarlet Witch. Man. Like there's a lot missing from celebrities. So it may not actually end up being like the dominant thing. You know, maybe Masters of Evil or something else becomes... I was say, Masters of Evil... Well, fine. Masters of Evil always seemed like a really good fit for 300. Right. At 400, I don't know how you do that because you're not You'll swapping a whole lot. It's insanely complicated. Also because, yeah, you only have four sideline slots. And then, you, yeah, you have to play at least probably one of them at full points. And I don't know what you choose for that. So, that yeah, be- Masters of Evil, I think, almost takes a hit with it being 400 points instead of 300 because they were just, like, super economical. But if uh, a team comes up and they've just got better 100-point figures than Masters of Evil does, yeah. who knows? I mean, I think Masters of Evil is going to do well. I mean, I'm having the double, especially if people decide to go with the brute keyword with double phoenixes, being able to kind of move somebody across the map. Well, you can't have double phoenixes. Everything is a unique ring. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Not even thinking about that. It would, be, yeah. would be great. It would be. That would be awesome. Yeah, I think that wow. would be like the normal go-to. And that's why I, I don't... I think you could do Masters of Evil, but the theme wouldn't be Masters of Evil. It'd be like ruler armor it'd be one of the things where you can oh, sideline sure. a few of the masters of evil and start with one of them but i don't think that's like your main force because i don't even know i mean i know you could do 400 points with them but i just don't know if it would be good i don't, I don't know i still i still feel like people are going to find a way to do masters of evil or some kind of str- they'll, they might not have the full team but they will definitely put some of the other people on there because I mean, I feel like I'm going to see Iron Inquisitor every other game, so... <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, that, yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, that's just, like, the go-to... Little fear. does he know, he's going to see Iron Inquisitor on a shield theme team. That's totally what yeah. it's going to be. Like. That, that, yeah. Honestly, that team. would make me happy, and that's why I think <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more excited for the 400 theme event than I am for the modern, so... All right, Iron uh, Inquisitor, Timian, Manifold, we'll, uh, who knows? Do you want to chat the Gladiator Friday event? Ooh, yeah. So the on uh, January 26th, the Gladiator. Uh, so registration begins at 6.30 p.m. And it closes at 7 p.m. 
Dinner starts at 7 p.m. after registration closes, and seating starts at 7.45. So it says dinner will be a three-course catered buffet with a cash bar. You'll have 45 minutes to eat and mingle before you are seated. The cash bar will remain open through at least the first round, of which will have will allow five minute breaks for drink purchases. It seems like there's an encouragement of a certain thing going on here. Uh, this is appearing mm. by popular demand. This three round event is a battle royale championship. You will have a pod of four and will be playing a battle royale. Each pod opens eight boosters, of which you will draft normally like a standard BR. The remaining twenty figures will be added to the prize pool at the end of the first and second pods. Players will snake draft the figures they take to the next pod. Then winners from each pod will advance to a winning a winner's pod. The remaining three players will also be entered into the next round in different pods. There will be three rounds. Each pod after the first will redraft from the figures each player brought into the pod. And then all figures will be entered into the prize pool at the end. And a standard snake draft for prizing will occur. Additionally, modern sealed product will be added to the prize pool. I I think this is going to be a really fun one. I think that this is a, I mean, it's a couple things. It's everyone's relaxed. It's the end of the night. It's just people that want to have fun. And then it's BRs until it's BRs advancing to, into other BRs, which I think is just like an incredibly interesting format, snake drafting to a BR where you don't know what the figures like your opponents will have that what they're bringing and so maybe you bring one or two really good things maybe you save a bunch of really terrible stuff and then one good figure so that like you can draft that into your future BR hopefully or maybe you play it so that uh, you don't get knocked out and like you actually advance it's hard it's an interesting uh, tactical advantage kind of situation it is. Um, I'm excited for it, nonetheless. I feel like it's just uh, it's mixing the events up a little bit, you know, from what people are probably used to playing at their local venues or, or in other locations. Absolutely, I think, it's I think be super interesting. Like just the the dynamic of it, and like actually running the gauntlet, the gladiator yeah. of battle royales. I think it's going to be so fun, and I'm going to have I'm going to have a fun time talking with players, um, especially as the night goes on. <laughs> Uh, seeing how they do in the event, I think that's going to be a blast. As the hours get later and later, I yeah. I definitely think that more uh, more. one of the best things that large events bring that like you can't find at like local events very often is a plentiful abundance of BRs, um, just like BRs popping off constantly and stuff. And this is definitely like one of those things where you'll never see an event like this at your local game store. It just cannot possibly happen there's not enough people that would show up for it but like here we are at like a larger event and it's even if you get knocked out in like one of the earlier rounds you're still gonna have a good time like watching the rest of it i'm assuming i know i won't be participating but i'll still have a ton of fun watching this event 100 percent. aaron are you gonna be participating in this event what are you uh what are you excited about <sighs> Um, probably just more, uh, seeing some of my friends that I've made at, uh, actually some of the friends that I made at Worlds being able to see them again, but, um, I've got a, I've got a soft spot for drinking in Heroclix, so, I mean, that's, I, that kind of just, you know, goes right to the heart, you know? <laughs> right on. Uh, right to the liver, right to the heart, of course. Indeed. Do you know if it's going to be modern? It just says, uh, eight boosters. Do you know if it's going to be modern, if it's going to be a mix? Uh, do you know what we can expect for product here? Uh, it's going to be more modern than anything. Um, more modern than anything, which yeah, means there may be some gold, some some gold old mixed in. Uh, I mean, you'll have. I think that I think the only old set that might get thrown in would be Empire, but I think that's okay. just based off of off of, off of some stock. But for the most part, it's going to be mostly modern stuff that's actually okay. been put in. So I was curious about the uh, the thing being. I, I know it's just these miniatures games are just kind of like a placeholder image. I think because they're used for teams as well. But it's yeah. like Swords, Disney Plus, What If, Empire, and Wonder Woman. And I'm like, oh, uh, hope we're not. Hope it's not no. these. No, play, placeholder okay. images entirely. So yeah, there's a certain combo of uh, hero click sets that just do not play well together. If one person has it and one person doesn't. I think yeah. anyone getting Wonder Woman 80th compared to someone getting What If or Empire is at a huge advantage because Wonder Woman 80th had some real Amazing. 
crazy high powered high point pieces uh whereas like what if was like a lot of like small point finesse pieces right yeah i mean mean, well i think i think it'd be personally fun if we just threw in like an entire case of infinity challenge and we did battle royals off of that i feel like that'd that'd be great that's probably the best way is yeah you do you do some ancient uncarded sets I think you have, to, you have to be drinking to be playing Infinity Challenge. That's yeah, and, and you play in the big four corners map, like the the five times the normal size oh, one. You know, like, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, it sounds like a blast, Aaron. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> no, if I were to do an old set uh, BR like that, it'd probably be Icons. I feel like Icons is probably one of the okay. best old mm. sets out there. A lot of moving attack in that. I'm still like emotionally scarred from that Superman. The two hundred fifty point mm, ones. Ooh, honestly, for that reason, maybe it shouldn't be icons. Yeah, maybe legacy. Legacy. Oh yeah, we get some of the Kingdom Come guys. Yeah. Oh. Right. So Saturday, this is the the peace de la peace de la This is the the end all be all. This is what the weekend is all about, and it is the three hundred point modern age. Love that it starts on Saturday. Registration. The cock will crow at eight a.m. is when registration starts. Yeah, and you have. <laughs> 45 minutes to get done with registration because seating starts at 9 because you guys are expecting a big turnout. It's already looking like you got a great turnout and you want to get all this done in one day. So yeah. we're starting. I mean, most hero clicks events are what? Start at, they're like registrations usually at 10. They start at 11 for the average hero clicks event. And we're doing yeah. registration begins at 8 a.m., seating starting at 9 with a very interesting event the yeah. night before to recover I was going to say, that's a, that's a hard night before if you're taking 300 Modern seriously. If you're, uh, I don't know. I mean, I've heard differently. Just, I've heard there's... That's how you there's separate some, the boys from the men, you know? Yeah, like, there's some HeroClix players, players that can handle <laughs> uh, a long night before a, a hard day ahead. I I personally, I'm at that age where I I need my my eight, my solid eight. So, uh, like, even in the description, it's like, yeah, we know this event's going to start early. So, hopefully everybody's ready. Get your build sheet pre-printed out on HC units. Please, I beg of you, everyone, please. I uh, keep hearing HC realms, and I, like, immediate facepalm just... You know, I'm like, what's yeah, happening no. here? I sent you my screenshot no from HC realms, yeah. Oh, yikes, yeah. yeah. So, anyways, it says all builds verified by a judge, of course, of course. Um, do do do. What's like the important thing? There it is. So, random tarot deck checks will occur throughout the event, and again on all decks that enter the top cut to verify there is no marked card. Besides that, it's modern age rules as normal. But I just thought that was a very interesting inclusion to make sure everyone is being a good, a good, a good little hero who's player, uh, being a nice, a nice, good, honest person. And I love, I love seeing stuff like that just to make sure. Everybody's being squeaky clean as we get into modern age. Because, you know, it can be, uh, be a little cutthroat. Be a little yeah. cutthroat out there. Somebody's flipping a tarot card out from their ass, you know, and <laughs> yeah, in the deck. Hoping, like, why does that one smell not. funny? You know, it's what's going on here. I would say uh, as... I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say this in, like, a normal situation, but I will say um, it is good practice as, like, a competitive hero clicks player to just keep track of like what's going on and like notice things. So if like you if you check if you're just like watching your opponent's like movements and they they're like looking like really closely at their tarot card when really all it should be is a flip, read the name and that's it. If they're like <laughs> analyzing it, maybe it's marked. Um but yeah, that I have not ever heard of anyone marking no, neither tarot cards yet. I'm sure that it like ha- has happened at some point. Like it just seems like it's likely that like you know, with this game element, somebody can do it, so they will do it at some point. But yeah, I feel like uh, if you're just keeping like a an eye on things, and then yeah, like you can always call the judge if you feel like your opponent's deck is marked. And then of course, yeah, these random checks definitely add in like the. I wouldn't even say an added security factor it's more so like a deterrent you like tell people you're going to be doing this and so it's less likely that they will do it just in case they do get checked because what if i'm going into like top 16 and my deck gets checked and suddenly i'm disqualified from the tournament and i lose out on my prize that's rough i don't want to do that so if i'm a serious player you know yeah i think the biggest thing is also make sure you sleeve 
your tarot cards and don't do anything dumb with them because if they get injured, ripped, torn, bent, whatever, that that is usually considered marking them in some way. So just be very careful with your stuff and other people's stuff. I recommend the, the, see, the see-through ones. If anybody happens to need oh, them yeah, while they're there God, that I'm day, see-through. I'm going to have a stack of 100 with me. Like, <laughs> good. That's, backpacks, that's a pretty good them. call. Um, at Worlds, we saw if your tarot deck was messed up in any way, they would just give you playing cards. Um, so I don't know if you guys have that in Vaughn or what your judges are planning on doing. You have three great judges. I don't think we mentioned it yet. Lucas Van Hollen, PJ Boland, Anthony Barnstable. Three very capable judges to make sure these events are going to run smoothly, which is super nice. So 300 Modern, though. I'm going to spend a little bit of time. because we only have one more event after this, and we'll get into prizing here shortly. But just to spend a little bit of time on this. Aaron, what do you think is going to win? Uh, we're in a we're in a weird state for meta and hero clicks. Um, a lot of there's I know we're in a weird ways... state. We're going to Florida. Don't you don't know how <laughs> weird the state is right now? Yeah, you know everybody always wants to crack on Florida, but as left as like that's where everybody wants to retire or go on vacation. Funny how that works, right? It, it's a sunshine um... state. That's why uh, I will say speak to the Florida man meme. Uh, the reason why we get so many funny, hilarious, crazy stories out of Florida is because they have the Sunshine State Law, or like a Sunshine st- Law, that means that like they have freedom of press for literally anything that happens legally or like law enforcement's involved at all. So anything that anyone does in the state of Florida, like you get the opportunity to get like a full rec report on as right. like a journalist. And so that that is why we get like the Florida man memes. I don't know they come out so early too. It's because they don't actually get the person's name typically. They're just like, oh, they did that. A type of I'm gonna write about yeah. it. Yeah, and they don't man actually did X, yeah. Y, that's Z. what they just did exactly. Yeah, so that's why it's uh, like uh, the Florida man. We have a game here in like Florida that like I played in high school. You type in your birthday and Florida man and see mm. what crazy incident comes up. So we've done this. I mean, yeah. I'm, it's, it's a lot of fun, but yeah. um, I won't share yeah. in the state of Florida because Nebraska recently made national news because a, a man from Lincoln took an excavator and attacked the entire Dude, city of Lincoln. That was insane. That was wild. Seeing <laughs> he that. destroyed like a car, a liquor store. Uh, he attacked people in a Home Depot, including a police officer. He was it was a, a mini uh, killdozer situation. Oh, yeah. That was wild. I saw that on, like, a, not to get too far off, but I saw that on an Instagram reel. Not Nebraska, not Omaha Scan, or not any of this. I saw it on an Instagram reel that showed me that. I was like, what yeah. in the world? I first uh, saw it in, like, Tucson Times or something, and I was like, oh, jeez. That's not even close to Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, it was, it was go over, Huskers. But... Uh, but, no, so... For, Seriously, for meta, like, though, what or... do you what do you think is going to win? Like, Hero Clicks <laughs> Modern Age, three hundred points. No, no more, you know, sidestepping the question, Aaron. You're trying to say, oh, it's so no. difficult. I know what you're trying no, to do. No, there's there's Aaron. there's two different kinds of teams, really. Um, okay, because we're me. we're in a, we're in an area where you can either have obnoxious attacks, you know, with the Alpha Strike, and you're in an we're in an era where it's very hard to miss, but you're also getting a twenty two defense on some of your clicks or reducing some of the modifiers that allow you to get the ridiculously high attacks. So you're either building offensively or defensively. So um, I think we're going to see a lot of. But if we're talking like wins, I really don't think you're going to see a lot of the. Uh, I mean, Carnage Surfer. I know his price is going up for some reason, but I don't think you're going to see a lot of them unless unless somebody pulls like a PJ and plays like five Carnage Surfers. You know, like that's. <laughs> I mean, that's that's one thing. But um, I mean, obviously, we're going to see a, at least one Scott on the winning team. I feel like that's a kind of a granted. Uh, that's a pretty fair bet. Yeah, yeah. Feels like but, a shoot um, at this point. I think uh, pulse wave is going to be a huge factor on it, and uh, really your modifiers. You know how much modifying can you have done, and you know how can you out action the team while you know pincering whatever actions you have coming toward you. So it's really going to be you know your placement. So it's it's either going to be a defensive team or an offensive team. I know that really doesn't answer the question, but if we're talking specifically peace. That's what I said. The meta's kind of cracked open right now when we were talking earlier. There's a lot of good teams that people wouldn't, you know, see to the left. Um, I, I know spider Man stock has gone up. Uh, maybe Arachnites has gone down a little bit. Carnage Surfer was still up there. Um, the Black Lanterns, uh, big shocker. They, I don't think anybody's going to be playing the Black Lantern even 300 Modern. And, uh, yeah, and then 
obviously Jennifer Kale is also going to be wrecking a lot of people too. So, yeah, but. that Jennifer Kale defense shell team, I love it in theory. I just think, given a large enough pool and a long enough event, eventually someone's going to hit no matter what. Like, a, you know, you'll you'll run into that random scenario where somebody's running like we kind of mentioned earlier, like. Uh, some pulp figures someone might be running like a like orb and roll like a crit miss which becomes a crit hit and just crit hit energy Mm. explode that jennifer kale team i wouldn't say that for modern i don't think that's going to happen in modern but something like that it always seems like those big defensive shells eventually like they do really well in swiss and then they eventually get to like the top cut and they just kind of get petered out because dumb luck enters the playing field at some point and you know they'll just miss their first six attacks and their opponent just crit hits two attacks or something yeah i mean hero clicks is a dice game through and through which is kind of always the tough part about a defensive shell team but it can happen obviously a lot of it's gone now with what caleb reddick won canadian nationals with like a lot of that's retired but Kind of what like Azrith was running um, when he wanted the Champion Clicks qualifier, uh, wherever. Like I, I like that defensive shell team. I like that style. So I'm kind of curious what ends up winning out, um, whether it be the Prime Spider-Man, Carnage Surfer, whatever Hyper Attack Alpha, or, or uh, freaking what's his nuts is the the one that everybody's going ham for. Um, oh, Prime on. Camo. Yeah, sixteen yeah. attack. If you do it right, hey, you don't like, gotta. That, you I don't can't gotta think tell of a, me, man. Uh, I can't think of a single despicable person that would run camo. Yeah, I, I can people. think of at least three. I can't think of a, a yeah. single deplorable. I know disgusting. Uh, human I know the, the disgusting way to run camo <laughs> with X Man. I definitely think you're like a huge massive loser, <laughs> oh, uh, especially yeah, if you yeah, think yeah. that's the only way to. I run will camo. say. If you don't run it X Men, then it's you're not as bad as a person. But exactly, exactly. <laughs> a much cooler person would run, say, like I don't know, Captain America, or even two Captain America. It's like a really, really cool, like handsome, sexy person would like do something like that. But you know, <laughs> a not so cool person would probably run like X Men or something with came out. I mean, there are there are other ways of getting in there too. So, but uh, we're just we're just being <laughs> just throwing shade. Just yeah, fun. Calder yeah. Calder won the Sioux Falls. Uh, Champion Clicks qualifier. qualifier. Yeah. I still need to talk. I still need to talk with David about who gets my qualification because I'm obviously. Oh yeah, it has to pass playing. to somebody. Yeah, it's got to go. Probably just Alex. I guess yeah, Alex. Or, yeah. I mean, yeah. Second place should just probably get the qualification. What? Uh, whatever. Yeah. What qualification are you talking about? The Champion Clicks qualifier. Those. Uh, there's a few. There's a handful of them. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The kit. What is that? Do you do you know what the quote unquote qualification is? Is that a first round buy? Is that a free entry? What what is that? They didn't tell me when I was there. Not a hundred percent sure. Okay. I can I mean I can re- reach out and ask Newmark on it, but I wasn't too involved as far as in the stuff getting sent out. Oh so. sure. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I know there's there's pricing involved and stuff. Um seemed like a great idea. I just could not make I didn't have the time to like go down that weekend and I subsequently have not had the time in the last, I don't know, 365 days to build a modern competitive team. (laughs) It feels like, um, the last time I built a modern competitive team was when rise and fall was new. And I was like building with a hellfire swap kind of stuff. Oh, Um, that's fine. That's the last time I truly remember like putting pen to paper and really trying to build something that was like crazy. Uh, but no, the, the qualifiers are an awesome idea. Regard, I don't know if they actually give you a buy or not. I know it, for Worlds, um, they are like introducing different events that are going to give you a buy depending on like placement hmm. and stuff. And you know- so. Kind of just mentioning Adepticon, I think this is really going to influence whatever the meta is going to be going into Adepticon. Because we saw the same thing with U.S. Nationals influencing like the meta at Worlds, where people were like, "Oh, worried Prime about Spider-Man Prime Spidey." Really yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of curious how like what happens in Florida. This is the first really, really, really big event post Worlds, post post rotation and yeah. new set. Like an insane amount of stuff has happened, really. 
since then. So I feel like this is going to 100% influence Adepticon, which is only going to be two months after this. So I do think that's planning on one of the Adepticon, most interesting things about this, especially like the timing. I know you guys want it to be like one of like the first events of the year and stuff, but I think the timing on it just makes it this like huge kind of like setting stone of like what is the meta because like it's, it's so up right now like people have no clue like obviously there's certain things that can't be because they've been rotated there's certain things that people think it could be there's a new set out i mean technically two new sets out because notorious wasn't out wheels wasn't out so there's that there's also the um gosh the the oh the guardians the health, calendar Oh, the oh, Guardians I- calendar, but also like the, oh, the iconic the card people. Too. Oh yeah, the Royal Flush Gang. The, You're right. the Royal Flush Gang, yeah, like the oh, that there's iconics. The there's a bunch of different <laughs> releases that are legal for this, and people are going to try and like you know make the first mark in the meadow with it. And I think that's always a it's like the opposite of a safe bet. That's always like an interesting thing to try and do, but it's the the safe bet would just be run whatever one worlds that is still modern <laughs> and then, you know, add in whatever new stuff like fits. Um even Scots weren't even legal in worlds. So this will be the oh, first wow. tournament we see with Scott porters on map and I think that'll be really interesting to see, you know, how the entire top 36 <laughs> are all Scott Porter-based teams, or they all have him on them. Yeah, it's interesting how it's going to play out. I mean, I, I kind of, I feel as if it's going to be like a, after Champion Clicks, at least for me, there's just going to be a giant void until Worlds and States, some of the other stuff that kind of going. I know people are hyped for Adepticon and, you know, the Huntingtons, but, you know, those unfortunately those won't be events that I can go to. So this is, this is going to be a big tester for me. But, I mean, we also got a lot of competitive players in, Central Florida, I mean, heck, we got we got some guys that come up from Miami. Um, why can't name is escaping? Ugh. Oh. Miami, am I right? <laughs> no, uh, I, I honestly Jackson don't. Bill am I right? I don't know. I, where's the Jacksonville representation? That's all. <laughs> Jacksonville I care about. representation. Oh boy. Yeah, dude, that's all I care about. That's my place. There, there ain't no home like Jacksonville. Great fish in there. <laughs> Yeah, I did construction in Jacksonville for about a year. See, I will say the, the, the climate was miserable. That's because you were working. Yeah, working. I am excited to be in Florida <laughs> in like a current uh, cold streak for the Midwest. This will be like the first above 30 degree weather that I've experienced in about a month now. You want to jump into teams here, Simeon? Sure. Yeah, we can jump into... So, final day is going to be Sunday, and that's 3v3 Team Sealed. So, registration for this one's going to start at 9 a.m. Registration ends at 9.45, and then seating's going to start at 10 a.m. So, fairly early day, not quite as early as 300 Modern. Uh, It's obviously going to be 3v3, so fewer teams than individual players. But each team is going to consist of three players. They're going to receive a brick of whatever the newest hero click set is. Right now it's Wheels of Vengeance. You will then have 30 minutes to build a 300-point team for each player. You may only use contents that were pulled in the brick. This includes outside-the-game interactions. Tarot cards will not be allowed. So I feel like... Wheel, am I wrong? It, wheels will be used for this? Sorry, my mic actually died. I was talking and I was in the process of getting it plugged in. My bad about that. Um, oh, yeah, no wheels will be used. Wheels will be used for it. Okay, I feel like building for three players with wheels gives a huge advantage. Like that's there's some really killer pieces that will make great tent poles, and then there's obviously a ton of filler stuff that will make like maybe a junk team, a filler team. Or just like, you know, I've got uh, this 200-point piece, and then I'm going to put a Yeti and Vampire and uh, some other, like, random goon figure, demon, like, on it. But I, I'm really excited for that. I think uh, Wheels is a great set to do Team Sealed with. I'm kind of concerned about it, honestly, because you're, you're shorted on the piece, and I feel I'm going to feel bad for the person that gets the brick that has to that gets a lot of equipment you know they get the three cycles sure that's good as far as for the team but you know 
I don't know about you guys when I was playing the the Wheels of Vengeance uh, sealed when you know when you got the two boosters from the set come out. I had to use every piece I got. Like it, it was the whole. I did build. I yeah. I think when we did pre-release or sealed, I don't remember which. But um, out of my two boosters, I used every piece except I had two duplicates that were like generics that I didn't end up using, and it was like a Yeti and something else. And so there was, or it, yeah, Yeti and Frenchie. I didn't use my second Frenchie, and I didn't use my Yeti. But otherwise, I used every piece. But I will say, like, those weird little rares and, like, uh, low point, like, super rares and stuff actually ended up being pretty prominent. Like, they ended up uh, being able to do quite a bit of stuff, especially when you throw, like, a motorcycle on. If you do end up pulling a motorcycle, throwing it on a character that has, like, phasing top dial ends up, like, changing quite a bit of, like, your effectiveness. I don't know. Um, I guess, I don't know. We saw Notorious played in Worlds. It was fantastic. It was. It's probably one of the best sealed or battle royale sets I've yeah. ever played. It I was think, just so good. I think Notorious is, like, a, a really solid sealed set. And as far as team sealed go, it might be a better set because... There is just quite a bit of stuff that, like, especially with the goons being able to, out of a brick, being able to do, like, goon filler on a team, um, being able to do, like, the assassin stuff on a team. I don't know. Well, I don't remember what we, what we pulled out of our brick, if it was, like, something that I could have built three teams out of. But I, I know, geez, yeah, it, it might be a little bit harder to build out of wheels than it is Notorious. Oh, 100. I, I, I 100% agree with that. But, you know, some people might luck out, you know, they'll score that Cathan or they'll score the, um, what the heck is his name? Uh, Zed Keel. You know, they're going to be Ooh, playing oh, those, that those, those characters. Dude, yeah. I don't, I don't know if Zed Keel is a, is a thing to play. I don't think that makes a team. I mean, but it may you, have to. You, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You may yeah. have to play that. Obviously, if you pick Cathan, <laughs> I feel like if you don't play I it. I think best case scenario is every player has one Cathan team. Like, best case scenario, <laughs> yeah. if you're a team of three, you hope to get, like, okay, we have Cathan, that's one team. Who wants to play him? That's yours, dog. And yeah. then I feel like it's heavily influenced by your chase. I think uh, Cap Wolf, this is obvious bias, but him being able to ignore Elevated for line of fire and movement, as well as just hitting for four damage and uh, having decent rollouts and all that stuff, I think he's a great sealed piece. Um, I think Slepnir is also a great sealed piece, but then I think there are some That's bummer true. chases that can hurt you. I think like Spider Knight is one of them. I think Vengeance is kind of one of them. He's like fine. I think oh, Spirit Namor Rider as well. well. Uh, I think Namor, really, you'll destroy. I think that's another team that's like, oh, I'm going to mess up some fools if I get Namor. Uh, all I know is Wolverine is probably going to be best case scenario chase pull out of that because he. I just so I disagree because I just pulled him and played him and I was like, e I could not make him work at the very least. You're um, then you're doing it wrong. I'm sorry. Well, he has a... that's, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. <laughs> he's so, uh, he's so great. He has that ability where. If you if you drive over terrain, he gets to just place it underneath another character, and then another one can just come and shoot it out from under wherever you just placed it, dealing additional damage. Mm -hmm. It's it's wild. Like, yeah, I won't lie. I I looked at that and I was like, yeah, it's a lot of words. Too bad I ain't reading them. And so then uh, I was like, Wolverine, what do you do? You hypersonic and you exploit Wolverine. That's what you do. Yeah. That that uh, part of the flavor of the design was from the X Men One movie where he carves off a little piece of the Statue of Liberty. He's tearing that terrain off and carrying it oh, with him. Oh, jeez. Uh, no, I, I genuinely... <laughs> it's a very cool ability. Makes zero sense to me as far as, like, Oh, character. yeah. <laughs> I still, um, like, it makes zero sense canonically for the character itself. Well, I but... think... What's the flavor text? It's, like, scraping played with fire. No, it says played with fire. <laughs> played with fire. <laughs> zero so I think the idea yeah. is that he's, he's moving, moving, like, the, the smoke fire terrain. terrain. Yeah, the, the fire the terrain fire that, like, terrain. Uh, Ghost Surfer... That's another chase that I'm curious. I think we might see like a 200 point ghost surfer team. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Looks and everything. Like, I feel like that's just another good point filler, whatever. Like, yeah. So I feel like chase is heavy. I think you definitely try to have one chase team. Like that's like every set. Right. But I think that's huge. I think the power scaling between the chases is just so massively different that depending on how good you can pull a chase, that's going to be one team. Your best case scenario is you have one Cathan team. And then 
Zarathos, that's another piece that's going to be disgusting. Oh, yeah, right? Zarathos would be great. If you can do, like, a Zarathos, <laughs> Iron Fist, kind of like a counter-exploit-heavy team, that could be something that's really solid. Is anybody, I don't know if there's any master, uh, mystical masterminers, too. Um, and I'm trying to think offhand now. I think one of the sleeper picks is Death Rider as, like, a rare... Mm, I agree um, with you. I think he performs way better than he should in Sealed, specifically. Uh, and then also, also such a good pilot because Popping because there's going to be pulp oh. earlier in the week. I think there's going to be enough people playing with Orb, playing with like a few of the rares. Like Orb is like the one that comes to my mind, but a few of the rares and like uncommons from this set. Maybe a, like a Blackheart Orb team is going to be like good enough where like that's that's only ninety five points. Those two figures alone. And yeah. that's a big old, you know, 11 for three flurry, potentially, or like a big energy explosion crit hit thing. I don't know. It's interesting. I think Blackheart's really high up there. As far as like rare pulled, of course, obviously he's like the best rare in the set. It's like yeah. him, Death Rider, I would say Iron Fist, Arathos. After that, like a Dracula. Um, Chathon's hard to deal good, with, right, but like, rare, yeah. <laughs> if you have the right um, stat modifiers, like I was playing Rawhide Kid with, uh, I played Rawhide Kid with, gosh, what's his name? The the dumb little Frenchie. I was playing Rawhide Kid with Frenchie riding on like the back of him, and that was giving me. I was getting a twelve attack. And he's got precision strike, so I was able to like do quite a bit of damage with that. And I think Frenchie was giving him energy explosion. Well, I can't remember ex exactly. Another interesting thing that you talked about that just that week after you played it was his whole bet you didn't see the second shot thing gets around mystics so well, and there's just so much. Mystic oh, that's another yeah, yeah, a huge thing in that really set cool. is. Mystic damage, yeah. Like, don't underlook Rawhide Kid for fifty points. Like, I mean, do you TV. play him, Calder? I'm pretty sure that's like a homage to you, isn't it? Like, uh, <laughs> I've had so <laughs> many people <laughs> say this figure looks like me. Right? Uh, so maybe if you don't dye maybe. your hair red and dress up as the Rawhide Kid, I mean, are you even are you even doing clicks right? That's, that's the all. dying the hair has never treated me. Let me check. Well, <laughs> ever it's never been a good choice. We may see Dial H may show up in some costumes. I'm not making any promises for champion clicks, but there may or may not be some costumes potentially planned for champion clicks. We like to dress our best sometimes. So we'll we'll see. Another figure know. absolutely not to sleep on. Sorry. I don't want to interrupt, but no, Elsa means. Bloodstone, the uncommon, if you have an abundance of like motorcycles, hell cycles, whatever in your brick, and you have an Elsa, her at sixty five points, terrible. Her at 80 points on a hell cycle or a motorcycle, absolutely phenomenal. She is one of the few characters that just straight up ignores Mystic's damage. And she's got range combat expert, so she's a 12 for 4. It's, yeah, that's one of those picks where I, I love that figure. Playing that in sealed with a hell cycle, I was like, oh, wow. Once I remembered that she has safeguard Mystic's, I was like, oh. I'm not supposed to be taking damage. That's right. And there's so few characters in this set that don't take damage from Mystics. It's yeah, it's quite insane. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Zarathos is going to be probably the huge problem if everybody's pulling one of him. I think yeah, just Zarathos. He's easily going to be like that's your Cathon killer. That's your like you can't punch through me, Cathon. I'm still shooting a twelve for four, then an eleven for four. You know, like I think he. He nukes a Cathon team, like, really badly. Maybe not nukes. That big top but dial he's pen damage. The big top dial pen damage, man, and then the instant stop click right after. When Cathon's making, you know, triple targeting, sure, but one attack a turn and taking, uh, double check, and taking Mystics. Yeah, so that's my that can be tough. I think yeah. best combo would be Lilith and uh, Prime Lilith with uh, Zerathos. Was it that mastermind just going to him? She's getting the free attack yeah. off of Zarathos as well. I think that'll probably be... If you manage to get lucky enough to pull one of those in the bricks, I think that's also going to be a huge yeah. problem. Also in Sealed, like, a Cap Wolf packing three werewolves is not going to be insanely unheard of. Like, 
Oh, Probably no. not three. Uh, but like you probably get like at least two. two. Yeah, one or two for sure. Yeah, and those. I mean, I definitely don't think you ever underestimate one of the werewolves. Like the modify attack and attack plus one and flurry is insane. They they have shape changed the majority of the time, but if they're untokened and adjacent, and they get that modify attack plus one and flurry, that is a really hard turn for you to get past. Um, yeah. No, there's there's a ton of great stuff in the set, and I, I mean, outside of Yeti, I'm almost every uh, outside of Yeti Nightmare. Um, let me just, uh, I had a lot of trouble with Mordred the Mystic, for whatever reason. He, on paper, he looks terrible, but for whatever reason, he's I, actually like so fun to play. He, it's he just how funny slapped me around for no reason. I was like, this doesn't make sense that this stupid no reducer guy is dealing me so much damage and being such a hindrance yeah made no sense but like for some reason he's just like you know and Mm. yeah being able to get on like prob enhancement whatever he wants to be on but yeah there's there's some decent stuff in the set there's obviously some real bad boosters to pull there's boosters where it's like two generics so like a total of at most 50 points or 65 points something like that um, and then like a rare, but hopefully out of a brick, you'll be able to put together three really good teams. I think that's, I think that's true for most and it is just double checking. Yeah, it is 300 points, which is, that's good. <laughs> that makes sense. It's, it's going to be fun nonetheless. Cause I mean, I think, uh, I think team sealed is just more of a, yes, huge part of it is luck, but being able to build those teams, even I've seen Cathan teams get beaten, so you know it's it'll that's true. It, it's gonna work itself out. So yeah, it doesn't seem like possible, but I have seen multiple Cathan, like three hundred point Cathans, get taken down by much less impressive pulls. Oh yeah, you know it's all about hanging out with the fellas, you and your team, just having a good time, rooting for you know if you finish your game early, rooting for the other guys to like win their games, you know to kind of watch like. It just adds the most fellowship, I think, to any Hero Clicks event. It's just a team event, and they're just always a blast to play, kind of working together. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about some of the Champion Clicks open grand prizes, all the cool winnings, all the cool stuff you can get for oh, playing yeah. Hero Clicks. So, this I think is really interesting the $1,000 plus grand prize Mjolnir trophy with laser, laser etched plaque. The grand prize winner is determined on highest count of overall wins for the three main events. 2v2, Modern, uh, and just 300. So I don't know what it says, these three main events. So I assume that's like 2v2, Modern, 300, and Teams, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, it's, it's Teams. Okay, it's just there's a little, yeah, okay. If a tie occurs, points are going to determine the tiebreaker. So this is really neat. This gives you a high, like, definitely go play in each event and make sure well, the three main events anyway. So not Gladiator, but 2v2, Modern, and, like, the team's event because I know at not nationals, I had a great, really high record. I never won any of those like events except for the sealed event on the last day, but I like got like top four, top eight, whatever in like each event. So anybody that's like kind of worried about, man, what if I don't do well or don't win or whatever, but if you can kind of place pretty well in most events, you might be able to win a thousand bucks, man. Like that's pretty awesome. Oh yeah. You know, obviously the winner is going to have another couple of wins up on you, but still like, Maybe they don't do well in modern, you know? It's like, this is really cool that it's, I like this overall, we would call this like the all around cowboy event. And that's like the winner of like certain events, but this is like really cool. This overall winner, like not overall winner necessarily, but just like the grand prize winner of like having the kind of the best record across is really cool. The trophy's beautiful. You guys have, have we seen pictures of that yet? Or is that nope. still secret? Yeah, okay, I was that's say, I was curious. I have not yeah, seen no. pictures. So I don't yeah. know if it's been posted, but I, I've seen it because um, there some of the construction that went in it was uh, my brother, and then as far as the uh, the actual hammer itself, I got to see it's it's gorgeous. You guys will love it. It's nice, fantastic. Part of what so, I I love about the grand prize is there's two fairly prominent players that you don't have to worry about stealing it from you, and that's PJ Bolin. Nice and Lucas Tom Van Holland. So they're not able to win it. So 
Oh. <laughs> I think much to like Lucas's dismay that he cannot win a meal near trophy, I think is really funny. <laughs> Sorry, Lucas. Yeah, that is that is especially hilarious. But yeah, like the fact that um the field will be made up of previous national champions, previous world champions. Um they might do really well in three hundred modern, but they might just absolutely not make any points or just completely fail out of like apples and oranges or maybe their their team polls are just so bad that they don't get any like you know this is going to be the best of the best with what you can construct what you can build with like what you can make the best of in three big events i love it i really yeah, like love that gamer pulp modern and then sealed like kind of like the three main ways to play hero clicks in a way three four ish main ways of playing it like that's really sweet yeah so apples and oranges prizes first place two cases a hundred dollars two craftworks forge champion clicks open design carrying trays i assume that's uh yeah so two cases that's bucks. actually Does a separate that mean... that's actually a separate um printer or builder of accessories his name's adam oh, okay. craft forge works he's on um I believe he's on etsy um he i as much as it upsets my brother, I use one of his playing trays. His trays they, look good. They look tray, clean, man. They look oh, good. Oh, his his box, like the the actual design carrying box. Oh my god, it's beautiful. Ugh, it's it's everything you want in a HeroClix carrying case, and it's gonna have Champion Clicks logo all over it. So it, nice. it, is, it is it is it is something to behold. So I believe uh, it's two cases. So this is obviously Fridays of two v two. The hundred bucks looks like it splits. It's like fifty bucks each. Per person, uh, then the, you each get a carrying k tray, which is really cool. Second place is going to get one case. That's a brick for each person, fifty dollars. You guys both get twenty five bucks, um, and then kind of same thing. Third and fourth is you're both going to get a brick. Fifth through eighth, you're both going to get two boosters. Ninth through sixteenth, you're each going to get one booster each. Really interesting. Top two teams are going to get a Florida Champion Clicks Open Fountain of Youth map. And then top four teams are going to get the Anthony Barnstable fastest judge around bystanders, which is pretty cool. They'll be legal not this year, but going forward, I believe they're going to be legal at Champion Clicks events and qualifiers, which is kind of neat. Pretty cool. Yeah, I feel like they should make it legal everywhere because I mean, freaking Anthony, man, that guy's that guy should have his own pog. I'm just saying, <laughs> dude, Anthony's great. I love chatting with Anthony. I always love seeing him at Hero Clicks tournaments, hanging out with him. He's always got good questions to ask. He's always got good answers to some yeah. good and questions. If you can Anthony imagine, saved me from many a bad judge calls by just yeah. being there in the nick of the time. So I, I will say if we can have three Scott Porters in the game and we can have a Scott Crampton and, and everything in between, Not, I think that's pretty much it, just those three, those four. Uh, we definitely could have a uh, Barnstable. modern age Anthony Barnstable that's legal. Why not? You want to know what we should never have? A Calderness bystander. Wow. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Rude. You're right. We shouldn't have a Calderness bystander. We should have a Calderness figure. Dare I say colossal figure. Yeah. Uh, it would just they, be they... a a pasty hand reaching out from a grave. A two-by-two two pasty hand reaching out from wow. the grave covered in ranch. Covered in ran- there the is. ranch hand from the grave. I'll take the ranch hand. I'll only accept that if it comes in a two-pack and Danny Pepper Cricket is holding the chair oh. up ready to smack it back down i would be so mad if we get a donny pepper cricket hero clicks <laughs> i'll i would be living the only time you Absolutely get your good. your hero clicks figure is when danny pepper cricket also gets his he doesn't deserve he doesn't deserve whiskey he doesn't deserve to be in this game that's no totally I dropping hate. all kayfabe i hate donny pepper <laughs> <laughs> uh is that dropping kayfabe like wouldn't not Wouldn't, really. Uh, he destroyed yeah. my property, so kind of not the biggest fan. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, different story for a different time. Yeah. I mean, you want to chat about the 300 modern yeah, prizing? The, the Saturday 300 modern prizing. First place is getting an APOC in Genesis, one case, uh, $150 Craftwork Forge Champion Clicks open carrying case. I think that's. An insane value. APOC and Genesis is probably one of the best uh, grand prizes that you can walk away with for like any random event. Even the uh, X of Swords event, you didn't get both. You'd have to play in two to get both, and you'd have to win both to get that. So that's an insane package. 
Second place also gets an APOC Genesis. They get a brick and a hundred dollars. Three through four, third through fourth uh, gets one case, fifty bucks. Fifth through eighth gets a brick, and nine through sixteenth gets two boosters each, which is an insane amount of prizing. That's a ton of bricks, a ton of cases, uh, a ton of overall <laughs> like product in general. That I let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, I, I don't, I can't keep count. That's a lot of, that's a lot of bricks. It's a yeah, lot of product. Was, uh, we, we, I helped move most of that product. It was like, we had like 35 cases of clicks. So we're moving them back and forth. It's a lot. So yeah, I think everybody would be very happy with it. I think at the end of the day, like as far as pricing goes, that's an insane amount of pricing being passed out. Uh, and then, Looks like an addendum top four gets one set of action objects, hand painted champion clicks, open unique barriers with laser etched acrylic base, and then the top eight get the Anthony Barnstable bystanders as well. So, quite a few Barnstables going out, quite a few uh, unique barriers going out, which is yeah, which will also be on. Uh, they'll also, I believe, they'll be on sale as well. Because you know, if you don't buy them, the only way to get them is by be winning. So they will be on sale, and that goes for the craftworks trays, the cha- the action objects, um, terrains, and so on. So if you don't win them, you'll have to buy them. But I think you guys have seen them. The brick wall with the the champion clicks uh, poster on there, and the bullet holes kind of coming through. Yeah, and I Perfect. I've seen a few people with these. Uh, these specific barriers, they look extremely slick. I don't yeah. own them. I own the the terrible cardboard versions of barrier markers. But uh, <laughs> no, like these these ones definitely do have like an extra layer of. If you're going to be at a lot of hero clicks tables, if you're going to be playing a lot, looking into these, not necessarily. Like, I'm not saying you have to come to champion clicks to get these specifically, but looking into like these specific barriers. They're very cool. It's a yeah, very wanna, cool uh, effect to have on the table. You want to ball out or have like some fancy terrain where people are like, where did you get that? Like, You want that kind of reaction? Exactly. You'll, grab, yeah. you'll grab some of these. And then to end it off, we got Sunday's 3v3 teams. First place is getting two cases. Two X of Swords month three bricks. 150 bucks. That's $50 per person. And then three of those Craftworks Forge Champion Clicks Open Trays. <laughs> Second place is going to get one and a half cases. That's a brick for each person. Third through fourth is going to get one brick. So have fun sharing, fellas. Fifth through eighth is going to get six boosters. That's two each. Ninth through sixteenth is going to get three boosters. That's one each. And then top two, so that's first place, second place. They're going to get three sets of action objects hand-painted. Of course, those unique barriers we were just talking about. And three Anthony Barnstable bystanders for Sunday's team events. That's going to be pretty fun. Exciting stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So. These Anthony's get to be played in future events. Is that correct? Future champion clicks events? Yeah, unless you just like the Florida man will be legal in any of the uh, events today. The ones we were giving out last Ooh, year. Ooh, that is right. Yeah, almost, for, almost forgot about the Florida man. Yeah. So, is there anything we want to say? That's pretty much. That's all the events that are going to be happening at the Champion Clicks Open. That's the prizes for all the events. Of course, you're going to be able to see. Insanely great coverage over at Dial H for Hero Clicks on YouTube, shameless plug, and of course the Dial H for Hero Clicks Facebook page. Facebook for more so a lot of pictures and just really quick interviews with players, and then YouTube for a lot of streaming games, live streams throughout the day. Make sure if you want to stay on top of everything Champion Clicks Open, you follow in those pages, as well as the Champion Clicks Open Facebook page as well. Is there anything else you want to say about Champion Clicks Open, Aaron? No, uh, I think Newmark and... um... House Rules Gaming are putting on a fantastic event. I'm glad that they were open to the sponsor, our sponsorship, um, and having you guys out there too is going to be fantastic. Uh, we're going to be there's going to be tons of prizing, lots of fun, and if it's anything like I like it was for me last year that really got me back into the champ, into Hero Clicks, it was a community, and I just think it's going to be a fantastic turnout. So the more we have, the merrier, and uh, yeah, I just look forward to seeing everybody there. 
Okay, right on. Then before we end the show, I'll, I'll once again put you on the spot. If you want to shout out your team again or anybody else, you want to do any quick shout outs, now is the time to do it, my man. Yeah, uh, obviously my team Giant Reach. My brother John, I don't think I've mentioned his name once. I've just talked about him. I think you brother. mentioned I feel like you mentioned him. Uh, <laughs> I, I mentioned him, but not his brother, not his name. John, okay. brother. Um, yeah, obviously the leaders, uh, I'm one of the leaders over at Giant Reach myself, but having them there and then the members that I play with at my store all the time. Um, we got some of our members in Miami that we talked to, uh, Cornelius, love you, bud. Hope you're listening to this. Uh, not a member, but I will give a shout out to him cause he plays with Cornelius as well. Joe Alves is the one I was mentioning earlier. Oh, love yeah. the guy. He's part of, he's part of Phoenix Nest, but, uh, he's still Ooh. probably one of the, one of the kindest people you'll ever meet. And I love the guy to pieces. So, and then, uh, obviously, um, yeah, to all the players that we have, you know, if, start rattling off names you know big steve the nelsons um we got uh t- um tyler nelson aka pulse wave i know they'll probably laugh when they're hearing this um sean jong uh, he loves you guys who he's excited oh, for you absolutely <laughs> sean my man helped sean. me helped me uh, lose to calder in 2019 <laughs> Nationals. I think that's probably the best way to say it because you didn't lose to Calder, but Sean yeah. helped you lose to Calder. <laughs> Sean, Sean and um, oh no, now I can't remember his name. Charles, the Charles, yeah. <laughs> Charles, 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 out of nowhere. Uh, both, uh, well, Charles doesn't play anymore. Uh, he but doesn't, Sean that's does. True. Yeah, so like, yeah, I've I've hung out with Sean quite a few times, um, just randomly, but yeah, he uh, he helped me. Secure a top 16 in U.S. Nationals in 2019, which was enough prizing to trade for a Ultra Chase Thanos nice. that same year. Which, yeah, I cannot complain about that at all. Great, great guy, great team. Yeah, um, but I think I, I think the only one I left out was Chris Drury. Whenever I'm not at the store events, he's always running them for me. So shout out to him as well. I don't think I left out any of the other members that are really playing all the time, but um, yeah, with shout out to Giant Reach, you're going to be there in full force. I'm really hoping to see a lot of other people there. So, so for fun. those paying attention at home, Chris is bottom of his favorites on the totem pole. Everybody no, knows no. name before then. <laughs> that is that is Aaron's official ranking of his favorite Giant Reach members. By the way, yeah, uh, yeah. in the order he thought about them, so that's it's true. Clearly. Thank you for doing that, Aaron. Really appreciate that. We um, of course truly see how you view your teammates. Um, yeah, brother It'll goes first, here. and then... Oh, I mean, you know, thicker than water. Yeah. On the right day, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, right on. I think we can all say we're super excited for Champion Clicks. That's coming out later this week. And Aaron, thank you so much for being on the podcast, my man. We really appreciate it. Of course. Hope I uh, hope I gave some constructive criticism, not just some flabbergasting nonsense so i think you did i i absolutely think you did my man i think there's going to be a few a uh, few people that are going to be on their way to champion clicks hear this and uh they'll get enough insight from you specifically to uh make some changes maybe i'm very ominous but yeah <laughs> <laughs> make some make some big changes specifically because of what you said hopefully but yeah, yeah that'll be it for us tonight uh, Dial H, as always, brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including the latest HeroClix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5 for uh, 5% off your orders. It applies uh, regardless of pretty much everything, I think. Yeah. Uh, from all my various testing, I think it just always works. Uh, I, buy, I, buy, I buy trading cards and yeah. use it all the time. So yeah, yeah love you, it. Even if you've got like already existing discounts and like they've got sales and stuff, it just all adds up. It's kind of insane. Um, but if you want to go direct to the source for HeroClix, you can go to shop.wizkids.com. I know that's where Tony likes to go. Yeah, it's the best. And Tony likes no. the best. So go to shop.wizkids.com and use code DIALH10 to save 10% off your orders when they're not including Iconics, pre-orders, or specialty figures. So anything that's not one of those, you can get 10% off of. Pretty good deal. They've got a ton of interesting stuff going on. Usually they have like a brick for a brick or like brick for certain convention exclusive figures. I think those are good deals. 
I participate sometimes. So check them out. And like always, ladies and gentlemen, for all things Hero Clicks, make sure you dial H. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks help. Ooh. <laughs> We're not going there. That's how numbers work. Over okay, yeah, six people think I am funny. I'm your Captain America. That was just you in a costume. Well, the rest of